Samsung. For people with more sense than money. Samsung is well known around the world for producing cell phones. However, in its native market of South Korea, the massive corporation is much more than just a tech brand. It companies touch many aspects of people's lives from cradle to cemetery. South Koreans could be born in a Samsung-owned health center, grow up, learning to read and write with the help of Samsung tablets, and then study in Sung Kyung Kwan University, which is affiliated with Samsung. It does not stop there. They might be then residing in a Samsung-built apartment home, equipped with Samsung electronics and appliances. Even when the South Korean dies, he or she may wind up at a Samsung funeral parlor. Samsung is a chaebol in South Korea, and that's a big family control business that have dominated the country's economy for decades. The word is derived from the Korean words che for wealthy and bol for clan. It refers to a vast group of interconnected businesses that are typically controlled by a wealthy and privileged family. There are several in South Korea, but the most well-known outside the country are Hyundai, LG, and Samsung. Chaebols rose from the ruins of the Korean War. Following the end of the war, the government diverted relief funds and low-interest loans to businesses that pledged to restore the country's economy. In order to assist domestic industries to develop, the government protected them from foreign competition. Chaebol played a significant influence in South Korea's subsequent growth as an industrial powerhouse. The founder and forefather of the Samsung Empire founded a little dry goods shop. Lee Byung-chul started his business with a $25 investment when he founded his first store. Years later, his son would launch the Galaxy S, one of the most sought phones on the market, into smartphone glory. In 2012, Samsung's revenue accounted for 17% of South Korea's GDP. A scandal caused Lee Byung-chul to resign from the Samsung business empire in 1966. Lee Chang-hee, his son, was arrested smuggling 50 tons of saccharin in Korea. Lee Byung-chul was forced to resign and his eldest son, Lee myeng hee took over in 1967 as was customary in South Korea. Lee myeng hee was appointed CEO in 1967. Although his leadership style was harsh and hated by Lee Byung-chul's closest allies, Lee Byung-chul wrote in his memoir that Lee myeng hee threw Samsung into turmoil within six months of taking over. Lee Byung-chul's second son, Lee chang hee ran for CEO in 1969 after informing the president of South Korea regarding his father's political bribery. Lee Byung-chul, on the other hand, suspected Lee myeng hees participation, and so the names of both of his eldest sons were immediately removed from the succession list in 1969. Lee chang hee fled to the United States after his father effectively exiled him. When Lee Byung-chul died in 1987, his third son, Lee kun hee was bought in as the next chairman. Much to the displeasure of his brothers, Lee Byung-chul was said to have two additional children with an unnamed mistress. With Lee kun hee in charge, his siblings divided the empire between themselves. Lee kun hees other sisters, Lee In-hee, who was in control of Samsung's home furnishing section, and Lee myung hee who was in charge of Samsung's retail business, left the company in 1991 and 1997 respectively. CJ Shale Chedang, which sells food and biopharmaceuticals, split from the Samsung Group in 1997. Lee Jae Hyun, Lee Myung Hee's son, was in charge of CJ Shale Chedang. Lee Jae Hyun was convicted of theft and embezzlement in 2014 and convicted to four years in jail. Lee Kun Hee was convicted in 1996 of bribing former presidents Chun Do Hwan and Ro Tae Woo. Later in 1997, he was released by then President Kim Yong Sam. In 2007, Samsung's head lawyer, Kim Yong-chul, informed authorities about political bribes, possessed by Lee Kun-hee, which the executive reportedly used to pay prosecutors, judges, and prominent politicians in South Korea. Kim Yong-chul stated the company had instructed executives to be pawns in the event of controversy if fingers began to point towards Lee Kun-hee. Lee Kun-hee was convicted guilty of tax evasion and fined around $90 million. After a five-year waiting period, he was sentenced to three years in prison. He resigned as chairman and apologized publicly in 2008. Lee Kun-hee was personally forgiven by South Korean President Lee Myung-bak in 2009. Lee Kun-hee reclaimed his status as chairman of Samsung Electronics and by 2011, the business was producing millions of LCD screens, processors, and tablets every month. When Lee Chang-hee deceased in 1991, 
Li Mang He returned in 2012 alongside his sister and claimed for $3.54 billion in a lawsuit. He implied that their father and empire founder, Li Byung Chul, had left a share of the empire's stocks to the two siblings and that Li Kun He had robbed them of their rightful inheritance. They requested a quarter of the chairman's stock in Samsung Life Insurance, valued at $850 million. Samsung Life owns a majority stake in Samsung Electronics and the cut would have reduced the chairman to the insurance company's second largest stakeholder. The incident sparked anticipation at the time that Samsung company would be split up again, but it was overturned when a South Korean judge ruled in favor of Lee Kun Hee. Lee Kun Hee's four children, three daughters and a son were all set to the United States for schooling. Lee Jae Yon, his only son and apparent heir, was chosen to be his successor. Lee Jae Yong headed 14 internet venture businesses in 2000 with E Samsung as a major stakeholder, but the companies went bankrupt within a year. E Samsung lost nearly $18 million. It harmed the young heir's credibility and integrity. In 2006, one of Lee Kun Hee's daughter, 26 year old Lee Yoon Hyung, committed suicide in New York City. Lee Jae Young was forced to apologize in 2013 when his son's admission to a prestigious prep school was called into question. According to local media, Lee Jae Young's son was admitted with privileged treatment. Lee Jae Young's son dropped out of school later. With a net worth of nearly $6 billion, Forbes named the divorced father of two, Lee Jae Young, as the 40th most influential person in the world in 2016. Lee Jae Young was arrested and prosecuted in February 2017 for his suspected role in a corporate and political controversy involving South Korea's then-president Park Jeong hai Lee Jae-yong was charged with bribery, embezzlement, attempting to hide assets overseas and forgery. In exchange for political favor, Samsung was accused of donating $37.7 million to two non-profit organizations run by Choi soon sil an acquaintance of President Park Jeong hai the alleged favors included support for a continuous Samsung merger that cleared the way for Lee to eventually become CEO of the conglomerate, a deal that required approval from the government-run National Pension Fund. Lee denied the allegations. He admitted to making donations but denied that Samsung was looking for anything in exchange. In August 2017, a judge found him guilty of the accusations and sentenced him to five years in jail. In February 2018, the sentence was reduced in half and the Seoul High Court agreed to postpone the sentence, allowing him to go free. He was sentenced to two and a half years in jail in January 2021 after a retrial. His time already served was included in the next sentence. So far, every head of Samsung Shebo has gone in and out of court. They have been charged, prosecuted or imprisoned for tax evasion, bribery, embezzlement or forgery. These are major crimes and serious accusations all filed against Samsung senior leadership who are the most powerful and influential people in Korea. And although not being well known, some of the most powerful figures in the tech industry.